I'm Samira Rai. I am an alum of NYU. I went to the Center of Data Science. Um, I'm a batch of 2021 um, and currently just here to share my experiences with Aryan about what actually is data science, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so I think the first question is, uh, where do you currently work and what's your job title? Um, I'm working as a data scientist at Acorns Grow. Um, it's a micro-investments firm. Um, we basically help people to invest in a passive portfolio based on their risk preferences. And um, I work within their data science department. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that also kind of answers my second question, which is more around what do you do as a data scientist at Acon? Uh, so if there's anything you'd like to add to that. Um, sure. I think um, that can actually be a broader answer uh, at my end. Um, uh, my day-to-day -day job involves um, creating end-to-end -end pipelines for any process that requires a data science um, model. So for instance, um, one of the things that I worked on involved a an unsupervised learning model to understand our customers. Um, more recently, we have been concentrating a lot on NLP for internal and external uses. So I've been responsible for a lot of NLP for the uninitiated. NLP is natural language processing. Of course, like people at why you were going to know that. <laughs> Uh, but um, yes, so it's a lot of, um, I'm responsible for my own pipelines, which means that um, starting from the point where I get the data, which um, in most companies will involve a data engineering, which is mm -hmm. going to be responsible for the data ingestion process. I am responsible for building out the pipeline of my model and then the deployment or like if there's a dashboard if, at the end of it or a product facing part, I'm going to get some help from other departments again. But okay. uh, from the ingestion to uh, the deployment, that middle part is basically a data scientist shop. It will involve making sure that your data is clean. Um, it looks sane according to distribution analysis that you all will be doing um, in your intro data science course, I think. Yeah. Um, it's going to involve making sure that there is data for your project. There are certain times when you like want to make sure that your target and your features actually make sense. There's going to be a okay. large part of that contrary to popular belief where you think it's just <laughs> going to be a bunch of models. No, it's going to be a lot of um, uh, data wrangling, data mining, okay. data cleaning, feature engineering, and that's going to make the bulk of your uh, time as a data scientist. And then okay. once you're um, okay with that, you're confident in your data, that is when you will actually feed it to a model. Um, that's basically um, my day-to-day -day job. It will involve different things. Like I've, as I mentioned, I worked in unsupervised learning, NLP of late. I've dealt with projects in like supervised learning projects as well, which is okay. your XG Boost um, random forests. Oh so. uh, yeah. Uh, so I think like continuing from that question, uh, what are some tools and technologies that you find yourself using on your day-to-day -day basis? Okay, yeah, I love this one. Um, one of my personal favorites because I was asking this to people as uh, when I was at NYU. Um, yeah. I think what I've learned from my experience so far is that make sure that your Python skills or the language of your choice that you're going to be mm -hmm. programming in is really, really strong. So there are times when you will enter a project and you want to get your data structure of how it's going to go from one end to the other as efficient as possible. Okay. I can tell you the number of times that a process you think is going to make sense, but then when you actually deploy it, it's going to take like six to seven hours. <laughs> and if you chose the right data structures and algorithms, you could make it computationally much more efficient for you and the company. Mm. So like, work at Python every single day, get like 20 minutes out, do a data structure problem, uh, understand like what are list comprehensions? Why am I using a dictionary? What is indexing? How is oh. it changing my time in terms of work? Make sure that your code looks clean. Your code should not be a bunch of if else statements at the end of the day. <laughs> it has to make a lot <laughs> of, like you need to, is there the, like uh, you guys will be doing this in your courses again. Um, Loops take a lot of co computational. Uh, it, it's something I've brain. learned over time in the program, yes. Right. You need to make sure that you require it. Sometimes you don't require it. Um, yeah. At times when things are going to get really messy, 
you're going to require regular expressions. That's one thing that I've understood is so important and we don't like pay too much attention to it. Mm -hmm. So get to the basics of your coding language. Uh, domain knowledge can always be picked up. You will not know anything, everything about the company when you enter. So you're going to understand that when you enter it, when you do the projects, you're going to gain that knowledge. But if your computer science skills are solid, it's going to make the process much faster for you and the person dealing with you. So they're going to yeah. have things to give you. You're going to churn it out faster. And then it's it's going to, the project is going to feel smoother. Otherwise, you're going to be using chat GPT to look up what's wrong with <laughs> <laughs> That's also something I'm guilty about. Uh, Everybody is using it, I know. So uh, I think uh, the next question is more so around how your career trajectory has been, like how uh, before getting into the program and if those skills were important in getting your current job or you know something along those lines um so i think my case is somewhat different um it's unique in terms of i was um an experienced hire but not an experienced hire coming from computer science okay. so I did my first masters in um finance and it was more of like um, an interdisciplinary course like we have it at NYU. Mm -hmm. So I had the option to actually like um, take up coding um, courses. And one of the courses that I elected for was big data. And I remember um, the first project that we did using Python involved tagging um, Flickr images, um, using the tags of Flickr images with a hashtag protest and um, actually finding out where the next protest is gonna be and where to deploy the police forces. It, this was back in 2015. To me, this was so wonderful. I was like, this is such mm. a miraculous project. It's so cool. And um, like, that's how I retained my, I still remember that project. I retained my curiosity. So it basically led me to um, a job at the central bank. And then I was working with a hedge fund. And I think that curiosity about what was happening in the field of data science led me to a full-fledged program at NYU. Okay. And um, one of the things that I feel really confident about now is that I picked up so many different things from the program. Like I had a, a basic idea of what mm -hmm. exactly what I want out of the program. That's one thing I think is a little difficult for people who are just coming out of undergrad. They they get into data science with all the hype around it and the buzz. But if you've actually spent some time in the industry working in exactly that, you will you will get a better idea of what you're looking for for your next job. So I had a little bit of an idea and I was okay. like, yeah, I am in finance. I want to be in fintech. So it's going to be a, a perfect fit. But like once I entered, I realized NYU's coursework is really solid. Like I actually evaluated a lot of other universities. It, this program was a two-year program, which had something of every single topic built yeah. up in a very nice way. Like we didn't start with deep learning in semester one. We started with linear algebra, problem stats. Till this date, there are times when I'm talking about mathematically defending my model at my company. Like I will go mm -hmm. down to the very basics and I'll go like, no, I checked for this. It does not have auto regressive properties. And that's a really good thing. Like you're confident about things yeah. when you're going in. It's not just, I used this library and it gave me this result. I don't know how to defend it. So um, NYU really helped me understand that fighting the math behind your models is important as a data scientist. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's been really encouraging to me that I was able to get those skills early on instead of like yeah. understanding that during my job. The second thing that I really liked about the course was that it had things that were just happening. So I took a course in natural language understanding and we studied BERT and this was back in 2019. The paper introducing BERT had been released sometime in 2017. It was like less than two years old. We were mm -hmm. already studying it. And one of the reasons why I'm responsible for NLP at my job right now is that I knew stuff about it before like a lot of other people my mm -hmm. cohort um was interested in it of course but i had learned bird so it, it sort of like gave me a head start within that topic so i could i, I could get myself into different topics there was a bit yeah. of everything and you need to absorb like a sponge from nyu right now like just take up all the things that you think are different. You come across a time series thing. If you're interested in it and you think like there is a chance that you will work mm -hmm. in forecasting, take it, like invest time in it. You don't have to become experts by the end of that. 
you might like not even remember all of the things, but if you just retain enough to be able to be a part of conversations going forward, AI is going at a crazy speed right now. Yeah. Like sometimes just knowing that, oh, GPT is a thing. It's a large language model. That's enough. <laughs> because I, yeah. In one of, I think it was an IDS where GPT was released on Tuesday, our class was on Thursday. So we are, our professor Pascal, he asked us to log in and try out chat GBD in class. So we're among like the first few people. And like one month, two months later, it was all the hype and your parents are telling you, we're like, oh, we tried yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We know it. <laughs> Study data science. When I joined this company, they were using Spark and not a lot of people actually like knew about uh, why Spark is such a big thing. And I remember something very similar. We had a class in big data at NYU and they had made us log in into the cluster and yeah. like made us work in Spark. And we were like, oh, this is MapReduce. This is honestly at that time, I understood like 75% of what he was saying. The 25% was just like, yeah, big data, great. Now that you're using it, you realize, oh my God, we actually did all of this before. Like I knew what SS etching into a cluster meant. Yeah. We were like, what does it mean? <laughs> what do you do with because it? I used like PySpark library once before to write a piece of code, but as like I could have used Python for it, but when right. I use big data and it goes through like the hierarchy of MapReduce and then Hadoop and then your Spark, you're like, now that makes sense. It it like honestly, if you have almost a flowchart in your head, yeah, it's gonna reproduce itself in your code. So uh, my advice would be turn up for every class, <laughs> uh, absorb like a sponge. If it sounds difficult, it's okay. It's going to come to you once you graduate and when you start using it, it's it's going to be useful. Uh, I think so. The last question is very catered to uh, the last few sentences you said uh, for people in the program and for people who are going to try and find internships, what uh, suggestions or tips do you have for them that will, you know, really get them going or put them in the right state of mind for this right first things first i know it's uh difficult to hear of rejections we all had it i was a pandemic batch as we called ourselves um make your cv make your cover letter keep at it like consistently apply like do 20 jobs in a day do 10 jobs in a day but from the day that you think that i'm ready to start applying like just consistently keep applying if you're getting automated rejections if you're getting no responses it is just fine there are times when people have not even got into your profile and it's not about your skills it's not about you please just remember that for everyone if it's a first time job if it's an experience hire do not get discouraged by this it's just a part of the process you will land up in something NYU gives you a solid brand name, I promise. <laughs> um, the second thing is, um, I think you should be a little more sector agnostic. Um, don't think about just one thing. I know there are people who are aspiring to go into the fan companies. Yeah, it, It's great. Like you should always try for these things. Their interviews make you um, really understand where you're at in the industry, but mm -hmm. also keep um, your... Um, Keep, keep your horizons a little broad. Uh, mm -hmm. Think about startups, think about research positions, think about, uh, you know, non -for, not for profit positions as well. Some government data yeah. science positions are also like really good. Keep yourself sector agnostic. Don't just think about, I want to be at a pure tech company. Sometimes being at a finance company is going to be great. Sometimes being at a medical company is going to be great. Like mm -hmm. research in every field within machine learning has... Um, it's become beautiful. So you will enjoy the process and this is your time to experiment. It's your first job coming out of NYU. So keep yourself open. And the last thing that I actually want to say is there is a part of the process during an interview where people ask you, do you have any questions for us? And I know a lot of us actually go to Google and go, what are the good questions <laughs> to ask? <laughs> That's a good start. But what do you want to treat this is like a two-way interview. You're asking this company, I'm going to be spending eight hours with you every day. Tell me everything about you, which means mm -hmm. when you're getting like four interviews, ask everyone, 
what is your day like? Like not in just like a high level thing because you have to complete it. Really be interested. Ask about what are the data science projects that you were working on? Yeah. What were the steps that you took? Where is the data coming in? After you get done with the data, what happens to it? Are you productionizing your model? If it's a research company, they might not be productionizing it. If yeah. it's a private company, they will be productionizing it. Ask them what it feels like to have interactions across departments. That's a big thing. If you're just within one department, it's... Mm-hmm start feeling like there is no FaceTime. If there is interdepartmental connection, you're going to feel like you're a part of a bigger company. Yeah. Invest time getting really curious about the company. Don't be shy. They're not judging you. They're answering the questions just as this you just as this, like you are answering the questions. So ask like a lot of questions. The reason why I say this is that during an internship you might have a couple of months if you think you landed in the wrong place, you will get out. Or you might get a repeat offer and you might want to take it because like, you know, you don't have anything else or like this is a great offer. It pays you really well. Or you could be an experienced hire and you're going to stick with that company for some time. Yeah. The first six to seven months, you're going to want to learn as much as possible. Like there is a difference between how you're in a program versus how you're in a company. The Mm -hmm. learning is going to be different. You want to invest that time being in an environment which is conducive to your learning. You don't want to be dealing with things like, oh, I don't like this. You don't want to be surprised and like, (laughs) take that time. And the last thing that I already mentioned to you, be very good at the one programming uh, language that you choose. Be really good at Python, be really good at R. I think Python is our language uh, at NYU. Great language but be really good at it um yeah that's that's it and like all the best (laughs) i i think that was really insightful uh thanks so much for your time